Hello dear friends, welcome to another video of the Never Do Through the GUI, what you can do through the CLI channel. I am Vangelis and today we will be watching Rust server simplifying types through attributes. Uh, uh, I will talk a little bit about this and I will explain what this means because I think it is quite useful. No, not I think, it is quite useful and I have not seen uh, enough information on it uh, in the, you know, in the web when uh, working with Serde, etc. The standard answers uh, do not refer to the attributes that Serde provides and uh, these attributes can uh, many, types, uh, many times help you create better APIs, better uh, di data types, etc. So I will quickly talk about it. You will see how we can uh, utilize them and uh, you can use them in your own projects. So this is the documentation. Uh, we will come back to it, uh, but I will uh, start with uh, a simple application that I have prepared here to show this in action. So we have a struct of uh, a customer and uh, this is what we use uh, communicating with our backend. So we have our API response here. This is a, let's say a new customer that we create and this is the data that comes back from the service. And we deserialize it from the string to a customer, to a concrete data type. So let's see what happens when we try to run this code. Let's come here and let's say reset cargo run. Okay. Thread main panicked at failed to deserialize API response error missing field is deleted. So we have an error and the error is that this field that we have defined this deleted field is missing. And as you can see, it is indeed missing from the response of our API. So what is the solution to this? Well, most people will say that we have to wrap this in an option. So this will be optional. And it will be optional because we are not sure that we will get this from our API or we are not getting it from the API. So we have to wrap it in an option to make this work. So let's try this. And yeah, it works. We created our customer, as you can see. And the missing field was initialized to the none variant of the option enum. So we are good to go. And then if we want to use it later, we can say that, uh, let's say, customer dot is deleted equals some true. And then we can print again our customer. Let's see how will this work. Yes, it works. The initial customer has a none for this deleted uh, field. And then after we update it, we have a sum true, which is what we expected. But as you can understand, this is not the optimal approach, let's say, at least according to my mind and how I understand things, because, for example, for a Boolean field, uh, we only have two states, true and false. Uh, whereas here, uh, when we uh, insert an optional type, I think that we are, you know, making the API a little more complicated than it should be. Because in my mind, when this field is missing, we can safely initialize it to false. So a missing field should, equals, should equal to false. And this way we could uh, get rid of the option which wraps our data. So can we achieve that? Yes. And this is where the attributes 
and in this specific case the field attributes come into play. So if you check the documentation, Certe provides uh, amongst other attributes this attribute which is the Certe default and this attribute provides you the default value for a given data type. Our data type is boolean and the default value for boolean is false. So we should be able to come here and say that we want this to be annotated with a certain default attribute. And now if you if you check here we already got some errors. Let's remove the option and let's rerun our code. And let's see the result. You see that it still works and now we initialize the missing field to false very correctly and then we update the field to true as you can see here reflected in our code. So we still have a missing field here but we correctly deserialized to a customer. This field is a boolean instead of an option of a boolean and then we can work directly with it with boolean values. So as you can understand taking advantage of these certain attributes uh, simplifies our data types here and our, uh, our types in general. So we can uh, utilize them, for example, as I said, for a Boolean uh, uh, data type, the default value is false. For a string data type, the default value would be an empty string, if I'm not mistaken. So you could use this in order to initialize some string fields to empty strings, if that makes more sense in your case, etc., etc. And of course, this will also work with your own data types if you provide them a default implementation. So you can use this on your own data types too. But I want to show another thing, another uh, data attribute, another field attribute, sorry, uh, which is quite useful too. And I have used it myself. And we will still use the a boolean data type. So let's imagine, imagine that uh, let's create another field and let's say uh, has discount. So for each new customer, the first time that he is created, let's suppose that we provide him with a discount so he can buy some stuff uh, very cheap, cheaply from our store. And let's also suppose that we don't get this from our service. Okay, the service response remains this one. So let's try to run this. And of course, this will fail. No. It will not fail because I already added the default uh, attribute, so it will not fail. And uh, it will be initialized to false. But let's imagine, let's say that we want this to be initialized to true instead of false, as we said, because we want each new customer to have this discount by default. So this default attribute does not work for us because, as we said, the default uh, value for boolean is false. So what can we do here? Well, there is another attribute, which is this one. And we will use this one. And this one provides a default value for our field, which is taken from this function that we define here. This path is the name of the function, the, the fully qualified path 
to a function that will provide, provide our default value. In our case, we will define it here and we will we'll say fn uh, default bool true and we will return true. And we will say that this returns a bool. So this is the function that we want to use in order to initialize to true. So we will copy this, we will paste it here. And now let's try. And as you can see indeed, our field was initialized to true. And then after we use it, we can say after he uses the discount, of course, we can say that his discount equals false. Let's rerun. So it gets initialized to true and then it is updated to false. So this is the video. This is the information. Uh, I, find, I found uh, this functionality of Serde very uh, good in my use case. And uh, this is why I, I decided to create the video, plus the fact that, as I said, I did not find too much related information on the web already. And apart from the field attributes, there are other attributes, like variant attributes, where you can uh, manipulate names, etc. And there are also container attributes, which uh, myself have, have not explored uh, fully yet. But I'm just, you know, um, making sure that you will also have them in mind. And maybe you will find a solution here uh, to some of your deserializing problems. So this was the video. Thank you for watching. Uh, you can uh, hit the thumbs up if you like the video. You can subscribe, of course. And uh, till next time, have a very nice day.